ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Friday, honey. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole Tammy Roman situation. This has been all over the blogs. Everybody's talking about this. If you guys do not know, Tammy Roman went on to the real daytime show. And on that show, she basically stated that she was willing to let her husband, Reggie Youngblood, go out and find somebody else, you know, maybe for a year or two get with them, get them pregnant, and have a baby. Because as we all know, Tammy has had huge fertility issues. And this has been going on for about six plus years. Um, we've seen when she's came out and announced her pregnancy. Then she's had a miscarriage. We've seen her go back and forth on Basketball Wives about the pregnancy situation as well. We've even seen her on The Doctors. You know, she has been talking about her fertility issues for years. I want you guys to go ahead and check out these clips really quick. Oh, you guys have been all over the place lately. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we have. <laughs> yeah. And there's another person in the room who is developing as we yes. speak. Tammy is pregnant. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Who the thunk it? <laughs> what made you decide to be like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to gonna have this baby. Let's do this. That be down. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. That'll make him happy. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was getting D down before I decided to hey, hey, do hey, this. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, but, uh, I, you know, I love him. And, um... I feel like uh, we'll make great parents and we're gonna be together. So I feel like um, he hadn't had children and I wanted to share that experience with him. Yeah. Are you excited about becoming a father for the first time? Super excited, man. Yeah. It's the biggest blessing ever. Yeah. So it's something I always wanted, but I always wanted to be with the right person. I feel like she's the right person, so. Tammy Roman is known for her outspoken personality, but when it, what many haven't seen is the struggle she and fiance Reggie Youngblood have been facing behind closed doors. Reggie and I have been dating for about two and a half years now. It's been the best two and a half years of my life. I never thought that I would find a woman that I love as much as her. The best part of my relationship with Reggie is the amount of love and patience he shows me. However, we're 17 years apart. Reggie wants to have a child. Well, I've already had two daughters. I've been there, done that. But when you're with someone that you love as much as I love him, you want to cross certain milestones with them. And so it's something that I'm excited about doing. We've unfortunately had three miscarriages. Not only are we dealing with this scrambled eggs that I have, menopause is knocking at my door, which is why I think a surrogate is the perfect way to bridge the gap. And we can pick the sex of the baby. Please just be a little boy, please. If the eggs are too scrambled to be delivered. I would not want to be selfish when ultimately someone that I truly love is not getting what he wants. I'm not gonna wanna leave her just because she can't have a child. That's the woman I wanna be with. I love Reggie today. I'll love him 20 years from today. But my love for him wants him to be happy. And if we can't have a child, I don't think he would be happy somewhere down the road and so I would have to let him go. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys what she had to say on the reel. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. You definitely speak your truth. And recently, you and your husband, um, Reggie Youngblood, yes. you guys talked about that you're considering surrogacy. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Any updates? Anything you want to share with us? Or how were you How's guys doing? Yeah. It's on pause. Is it? Okay, yeah, well, I feel like I'm at a point where my career is starting to do and reward mm. me for all of my efforts and the time that I've been in this business. Yep. And a baby for me right now would just not yep. be the thing to do. Yep. So what I offered him okay. was an opportunity for us to take a break for a year or two what? and let him go find someone to have a child with. Stop it. And then when he has his baby, we could get back together. You so would genuinely be okay with that. Hold yes. on. So yeah. you're giving him permission. So what happens, let's say he follows through and mm -hmm. has this baby. 
Do you help raise the baby? I would, I would help raise the baby. It's just I don't want to have it. I don't want to go get my eggs and all that. Mm -hmm. it, it's really more wow, about him being so able forward. to have his legacy here because he's, the, he's an only child. And he doesn't have children. And he does not have any children. So it's wow. really more for him than it is for me. That's Would the very baby's selfless. mother be around to also raise the child? Yeah, I believe in co-parenting. I think okay. that's a very valuable part of a child's life. If the parents aren't together, you need to learn how to co-parent. Yeah. And then, you know, I could be there and love the child as if, That you know, is very selfless. It was my I own. can't say wow. as a woman I would give my man permission. Yeah. What yeah, you get to do during that year? Well, I'm, I'm her career. I am a <laughs> one penis woman, so even though we will be on break, mm -hmm. I would not entertain any other men because that would still be my husband. I'm just giving him the opportunity to go wow. have a child. God, and he can only have it with one. You like find that one woman yes. for the one child. This is yes. not a free for all year. Correct. Okay. Correct. But he said. What did he say? He said. I was gonna say. I don't want that. Oh. I fell in love with you. You're the woman that wow. I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with. And if God put me here and I'm not supposed to have children, then that's what it is. How did you feel hearing that? <sighs> It was a blessing and a curse, because I was like, he really loves me. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, I felt like I was being selfish. You know, like Ooh. our relationship has a selfish oh. element to it, because right. I really do want him to have children. I just can't be the wow. person to do that. But you know what? You can have children in all different ways now, right? In yeah. terms of adoption yes. and all. Yes, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. I yeah. have never heard a woman say that, and it's amazing. Yeah. All right, so you guys just watched that video and you guys heard what Tammy Roman had to say. And so a lot of people were definitely disturbed by this. A lot of folks were dragging her online. A lot of things with this situation didn't make sense to me because like I said, I've been a fan of Tammy since the real world days when she had an abortion on the real world and was really open about her life even before it was cool to be that open about her life. So that's one thing I've always liked about Tammy that she's just always kept it real and she she is who she is. Please pull the covers off of me. I told you to stop. My underwear is coming down. But you laugh it because it's funny. And it wasn't not funny. Now, you know, I definitely felt a way about her saying that she's willing to give her husband permission to go have a baby with another woman. Now, this is nothing unusual. So let's keep that real. But the way she talked about it. That's something that people who don't have the means and who don't have the money, that might be something that they settle on because when they can't afford a surrogate, they can't afford to do, you know, to harvest eggs and freeze them and do all this stuff that a lot of celebrities and people who have money can do. So sometimes if a woman feels like, oh my gosh, I cannot have a baby. I don't know why. You know, is it me? They've done, you know, they've gone to the doctor and the husband's sperm is swimming well. So it's something on the woman. I've heard women say this before where they'll give their boyfriend or husband permission to go get somebody else pregnant and then they can raise the child. Almost like a bootleg surrogacy. Now, for the most part, the other woman is in the know. She knows the situation. She's willing to carry the child for maybe just a few hundred dollars or maybe it's a family member. And then in other situations, some women just give their men permission to go cheat and get somebody pregnant and then we'll just take care of the baby. You know, it's all types of weirdo shit, but people have done this. I don't like the way it's being pushed like this is OK. And this is why before we get into serious relationships now, before they ever got married, they were dating. OK, so when they got together, she was in her 40s. So at that point, he knew he was an only child. She knew he was an only child. And she knew being 17 years older than him that it was going to be a struggle for her to have, you know, a baby. She already has two daughters and she hadn't been pregnant in 20 something years. So it's definitely a struggle for women as you get older. And that's where we have to be honest with ourselves when it comes to relationships. And I think that's what people are not doing. They're not being honest. They're looking at it like this person is beautiful. Tammy looks damn good for her age. You know, she does not look like she's 51 years old. But no matter how young you look on on the outside, 
At the end of the day, your biological insides are still that of your age. So you may look 21, but them damn knees say 55, okay? That damn back pain when you get up in the morning says 40. So, you know, biologically, our bodies are deteriorating and going through things, no matter how young we look on the outside. I think that's what she's finding out, that right now she cannot carry these kids. I think the situation with her and her husband goes way deeper, and I don't think she's being completely honest. And it's not a super long segment either. You know, as I look at Tammy, I'm seeing where she looks emaciated. She looks very skinny. She's lost a lot of weight. I know people have been very concerned lately. And for me, I don't judge anybody when they have extreme weight loss like that because I always equate that to a sickness. You know, when you go from being a regular healthy size to dramatically losing a lot of weight, a lot of times that's tied to a sickness. And I know Tammy also has diabetes. So that might be what's causing the weight loss. We all remember Chadwick Bosman. When he dropped all that weight and people making fun of him and come to find out he had stage four cancer. So you never know what people are going through. Now, what I find interesting is just three weeks ago, uh, back on October 24th, um, Screen Star reported that Tammy Roman had another miscarriage. So it seems like she had still been trying to give Reggie this baby and she had another miscarriage not even three weeks ago. Basketball Wives star Tammy Roman's world has turned upside down after the 45-year-old beauty revealed she'd suffered a miscarriage recently. Roman, whose boyfriend is Reggie Youngblood, was 10 weeks pregnant and entering her 11th week when she lost their child. I am deeply saddened that after 10 and a half weeks we suffered this loss, Roman said. We knew that this would be an uphill battle. We were up against the odds. I have prolapsed uterus and I'm diabetic. I battle bouts of hyperglemia due to my diabetes and my blood pressure continually ran high. We were prayerful we had and still have faith but we're not giving up reggie adds this is a tough time for us it's the worst pain i felt since losing my mother i want people to understand the severity of the situation we are hurting and negative comments don't help so this whole situation i think goes a lot deeper i think part of it is tammy feels extremely guilty and they're at their wits end it's like okay we just tried again and we had another miscarriage and i think she feels like this is the route that she has to go and the fact that she kind of looks kind of sick to me, like she's not doing her best, but she's trying to hold it together. It could be causing her a lot of stress as well. But my issues is if he goes out there and he finds another woman to go get pregnant, what if he ends up falling in love with that woman? Because after all, that woman is putting her own body at risk to bear his child. That's like a, a gift from God, you know. So what if he ends up being more in love with her or wants to eventually leave Tammy for her? You know, a lot of times people will open up Pandora's box and then get upset when things that they didn't foresee or plan end up taking place so that's where she needs to be careful when you're giving him permission to go get somebody else pregnant because technically you don't know where that might go you might be introducing him to his future wife and then you're left alone and you no longer have your husband now granted he did say that he didn't want to do that and he was willing to stand by her but i think reggie definitely wants kids i mean that was a huge part of their storyline when they were on basketball wives so much so that he got so irritated at her daughter and went off on her you know when they were talking about it so you can tell that's really where his heart is at y'all go ahead and check this out how have you guys been good been good you know can't complain. Still going through the same issues. What issues? What we issues? Got? Yeah. What issues we got? Baby issues. Uh oh. Yeah. What would be so cute is if you guys like babysat someone else's baby for a week. I'm not talk. doing this. And See, Reggie. I feel like he's very like defensive when it comes to certain I'm not things, doing and that's that. not good. If I had to put it into words how Lyric feels about Reggie, I would say this. She likes Reggie, she respects Reggie. Is she giving her all into getting to know Reggie? Probably not. I know what I want, and I'm just gonna accept what come with it. I don't have to test and see that. I'm a man, so I'm gonna handle my business regardless. Now, another thing that's very interesting is it also reminds me of in the Bible, Abraham and Sarah. You know, not to bring y'all to Sunday school, okay? But if you guys remember um, in the Old Testament, 
Abraham was Sarah's husband and Sarah was like 90 years old and she was barren. Like she couldn't have any kids. She tried for, I don't know, like 80 years or something to have a baby and she couldn't. Then God told her, you will have a child, but you're not going to have the child at 85 or 88. You're going to have the child at 90. And, you know, Sarah just, you know, she was tired of just being barren. You know, it's been almost 100 years. No kids. She wants to see little, you know, she wants to hear the pitter patter of her feet. So instead of listening to what God told her, because God said, you will have a child. You're going to have a son. Just be patient. She didn't want to be patient. So she told her husband, Abraham, how about you go and knock up the maid? Okay. Because, you know, back then people had slaves and maids and all that stuff. So the maid was Hagar. And she said, Abraham, how about you sleep with Hagar and y'all have a baby and then we'll raise the baby as our own. So Abraham finally agreed after, you know, a lot of pressure from Sarah so he ends up being with the maid, Hagar, and Hagar ends up getting pregnant. And so um, as soon as she got pregnant, she started feeling herself. She was getting, you know, she's kind of getting arrogant. Like, I'm that girl. He's been smashing you for 80 years and you ain't been able to get pregnant. He smashed me one good time and uh, we got a baby on the way. So then at that point, Sarah started feeling away. Don't y'all love how I tell these stories? I'm giving it a modern twist, okay? So at that point, Sarah's feeling away. Like, okay, first of all, yes, you're pregnant by my husband, but don't forget, you was just a maid. You're getting a bit beside yourself. I'm still that chick. I'm still the queen of this castle. So since you're feeling yourself a bit too much, you are banished into the wilderness. So she banished Hagar into the wilderness. And then God came to Hagar and said, you know what? Go back home. You will be okay. You'll be safe. You're going to have a son named Ishmael. And basically told her that Ishmael is going to be a great man. And she's going to have many descendants through her son Ishmael. Um, so Hagar ends up returning home. She has the baby. So now 14 years later, Abraham finally knocks up Sarah. Okay. Sarah finally has a kid at 90. And it's Isaac. So now they have the baby. And she's starting to feel away because her and Abraham are getting older and she feels like, well, Isaac is so much younger. There's no way he's going to end up being the king and, and gaining the throne. So, again, she got jealous and banished Ishmael and Hargar back into the wilderness, honey, sent them straight to the desert, sent them packing because she was so jealous that Ishmael, the baby that she asked for, the baby that she, you know, basically planned with her husband and this maid was going to take over the kingdom that she banished them again. Child, it's a whole mess, but. Anyways, that's what this reminds me of, okay? So like I always say, there's nothing new under the sun. Tammy ain't doing nothing that wasn't done before. It was even in the Bible, and we see how that ended. So be careful what you wish for, because the woman that you might be bringing into this situation may end up leaving with your husband. So I hope that she takes a different route. I, th I think the situation is really, really sad. Now... As I was on YouTube, I noticed that Tammy just posted a video um, trying to explain the situation, probably because folks are dragging her on this Good Friday. So let me go ahead and play you guys her videos by 10 minutes long. Let's see what Tammy has to say. Um, Y'all go ahead and check this out. I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Something my me being on the real, talking about, um, you know, a situation with me and my husband. And I wanted to just provide you guys some clarity because I feel like you guys aren't getting the full picture, which naturally you wouldn't get the full picture because fucking hell. Because it was a two minute segment on a talk show. So, you know, they only delegate a certain amount of time for you to talk about something specifically and then they move on to the next topic. So I feel like, let me give the people some clarity because I don't think that you guys understand. Let me give you guys some backstory. So here goes. Uh, Reggie is 17 years younger than me, which you guys already know. And I was in my mid 40s when we got together. Um, we tried to have a child together. Uh, we ultimately ended up having three miscarriages. We then went to an IVF specialist. Um, we appeared on a show called The Doctors talking about this very issue. And I ended up um, with a, an amazing physician called, uh, her name, Tina Coopersmith. 
in California. And so she was helping us with our journey to conceive. Um, I had, at the time that we started with her, six eggs <laughs> on my way out the door to uh, menopause, which I still haven't actually gone through menopause, but I wasn't producing, my body wasn't producing um, a lot of eggs. And that's why we were having the miscarriages, because even though I had eggs, they weren't healthy eggs. Reggie and I decided we would freeze the six eggs that I was able to produce. And so we did just that. Now I am 51 years old. And um, do I want to have a child with my husband? Absolutely. The reality that you guys seem to be not grasping conceptually is that there's six eggs. Those six eggs may not be healthy, which would ultimately mean, because we did all of what you guys are talking about. We tried to find a surrogate that could carry my egg and all of that process. And that was a lengthy process. And we would start the journey and then I would have to go on set. We, you know, go through all the profiles to, you know, to find someone that we'd like to carry the baby. And we couldn't finish the process because I am consistently working. So, that, okay, so now I'm going to finish the, the statement that I was trying to make before I said that. Anyway, so I was consi I'm consistently working. And so designating the time has been difficult. But within that, even if we found someone and they were going to carry, they were going to impl implant my eggs and hope that they catch with the surrogate, there's a very strong possibility. And I'm very thankful that my um, physician was honest about this that we could end up with a special needs child. To me, that is not what I want my husband, um, who has no children, to have to deal with. I'm up in age, I just felt like I didn't want to leave my husband as his only child with me, a special needs child. You guys may not understand that and sorry if you don't. Um, so when I said, take a break, what I meant by that without being able to go in depth here again, it was a two minute segment. Reggie and I are together pretty much all the time. He runs his businesses as well as my businesses. <laughs> we invest a lot into each other emotionally and spend a lot of time together. When I said take a break, the thought process in my mind was take a break from me emotionally to be able to invest the time mentally that it takes to find a surrogate, a person with healthy eggs. Like, it is a process, guys, with healthy eggs. You know, it would take a year, a year and a half, just to go through the entire process. So that's what I meant. Not that I would not be present, not that I would not help raise the child, not that we were not talking about a surrogate. I was not saying go find a girlfriend, stick it in, <laughs> and get her pregnant and have a baby. That's not what I meant, but here again, I couldn't go into depth and provide the utmost clarity. I meant take a break from me emotionally and all that you do for me to be a support system for me to go invest that time that is absolutely necessary to find the right surrogate. 
And so I feel like you guys didn't understand what was actually happening and um, what I ultimately meant. And so I did want to provide a little bit of clarity for those of you who didn't grasp it. Um, but it's not like I, I want my husband to go spend time with someone else. That's not what I was talking about. Um, but I also don't want to... Um, I want my husband to have healthy children. I want his legacy to be... Um, I want him to be able to, to have children that would carry on his family name. And that is a lengthy, time-consuming, emotionally um, in, in emotionally charged up investment that a person has to make. And I wanted him to be able to do that without everything that he does for me and with me being in the way of that process. So that's what I meant by take a break. Um, so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of clarity. Um, and um, But I have the most amazing husband. Um, when I talk about patience and understanding and just love of family and care, I could not have asked or prayed any harder <laughs> than to be able to end up with um, my husband, Reggie. And as I said on the show, he opted out of all of that. <laughs> he was like, you know, it, if, if that's the route that I have to take, that's something that I can do later on in my life. But I want to spend the life that we are living um, loving you, just loving you and who you are as a person and where you are in your life, being accepting of that and supportive of that. And so I love my husband so much and I know that he loves me. And hopefully you guys just understand um, what I was trying to say now that I've provided a little more clarity. Now I'm gonna get up out of here because I actually have a day off. Oh my God. <laughs> I have a day off and I'm going to go have some fun with my husband, to which I am very, very excited about. So hopefully you guys have an amazing weekend. All right. So you guys just heard what Tammy had to say. And, you know, I definitely feel bad for everything that she's going through. But what I will say is this. I don't like when people go on talk shows and they know there's only a limited amount of time. And then you want to talk about something as heavy as fertility and you basically, in so many words, the way she formatted it on the reel, like it was no big deal. Uh, Reggie can just go out and find a woman and get them pregnant. She talked about it so laxadaisical that that is why, and I don't even know if that's a word, honey, but it just came to my mind, honey, laxadaisical. But that is why people took it like that and ran with it. Now, had she went there and made the whole segment about her fertility instead of hopping from topic to topic, then she wouldn't be getting as much back backlash that she's getting okay so I feel like you guys didn't understand what was actually happening and um, what I ultimately meant and so I did want to provide a little bit of clarity for those of you who didn't grasp it thing to do oh, yeah. so what I offered him okay was an opportunity for us to take a break for a year or two what? and let him go find someone to have a child with stop it and then when he has his baby, we could get back together. So you can't get mad at the viewers and say, well, y'all interpreted it wrong. Y'all are just assuming. You said it's so lackadaisical that people didn't, you know, know how to take it. Like, damn, are you giving him permission to cheat and go get somebody else pregnant? But now that she said that in her um, live on YouTube, she's gave it more context. Basically, her eggs are old. And, you know, the older you are and you're trying to have a baby, there's a great chance that you can have a child with Down syndrome. Um they say that to any woman in their 50s. I mean, they told Janet Jackson the same thing. Can you more? That's just what it is when you get into your 50s because those eggs are 50 years old. They're not as young as eggs that are 19, 20, you know, things like that. So I can see her 
being devastated, not knowing like, are these fully healthy eggs? And if we create a baby and we have, we go through the whole surrogacy process, I don't want to give my husband a baby with special needs or down syndrome or autism or just, you know, a whole gambit of things. And, um, I, I can respect her for being honest. You know, Lee, she's honest enough to say that I don't want to. That would be too much. Kids who have special needs, you have to be a very, very patient parent. Um, it's it's emotionally draining. You know, one of my friends, her child has special needs and it's a lot of work. You know, it takes a very special person to have the time and patience to really deal with the child with those type of issues. So for her realizing, you know, if this baby comes out with special needs, I won't have the time. And that's not, you know, the type of legacy I want to leave for my husband. So you can tell that she's very torn and I feel bad for her, you know, but at least she's honest, you know, about the situation, um, you know, and special needs kids are, are a blessing either way, but if people could prevent it, most people would, you know, so I don't think she's being mean or being selfish in that, you know, with her saying that, um, a lot of times when things happen, people don't know until it's like, okay, the baby's born, you know, what can you do now? So they're telling her in advance, like these are the things that can happen with these particular eggs. But I wonder if they can do some type of genetic testing on the eggs, you know, like maybe before they implant it into the surrogate, you know, get the egg pregnant and maybe do like genetic, genetic testing and see if the egg will be a child with special needs or not, you know, before having to go through the whole implantation process. But yeah, this just shows you that fertility is no joke. The human body is an amazing thing. Children are a blessing. Here we have a couple who have been trying for years to conceive. They're both financially fine. Reggie's a good dude. Tammy's a good woman. And they can't have what they both want. And meanwhile, you have rappers like The Baby and Future and all these other guys out here just knocking up people willy nilly, you know, not understanding like to be able to have children is definitely a blessing. And to be able to create a, a stable home is also a blessing. So, you know, my heart definitely goes out to Tammy. I'm glad that she further explained, but you can blame the audience for taking it how they took it because the way you said it was very, very flippant. But in the second video, you can see the hurt and pain in her eyes and Tammy just looks like I mean I don't know she just looks like she's not feeling too well I just hope everything is okay with her I hope she's doing all right I hope she's able to get her diabetes under control because she just looks like she's just going through a lot and there's a lot of heaviness I'm feeling that from her video but um Hopefully they'll be able to figure something out because I feel her, you know, as a woman, like this is not just her boyfriend. She's actually married to him. They got married in 2018. And that's something that they've always wanted for each other was for them to have a baby. And so, you know, hopefully he'll get his wish some way, somehow they can figure it out. But I think they should maybe do genetic testing on the eggs after they've been conceived and, you know, while it's growing in a Petri dish or whatever they do and see if they can find out any information before they implant it. And then if they find out that this egg will have issues and maybe go on to the next one, you know, who knows? But, yeah, this is definitely a struggle that she's been going through for a long time. And hopefully they'll figure something out. And people saying, well, they can always adopt. Well, that's not the point. It's not for them. It's not about adoption. It's about his genes, you know, him having a baby with his DNA. And he was a football player. So he definitely has some good genes. You definitely want to pass that down, you know. So, I mean, I get it. But I just hope that everything works out for them. So on that note, child, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation with Tammy Roman and Reggie and her basically saying that he can go, you know, find somebody else and have have a baby with them but now she's clarified the situation a lot more so do you guys feel her for saying what she said or do you feel like no this is not the way you guys are just not meant to have kids so be it or do you feel like they should just keep trying and maybe go the way that she's suggesting that he go and knock somebody else up and then they raise the child together so let me know y'all's thoughts go ahead and leave a comment Make sure you guys hit the like button. Don't forget to share the video. Most importantly, honey, make sure you subscribe because you know YouTube loves to unsubscribe people, child. So I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good Friday. Deuces.